Hi everyone, it's Anthony back with another video and tonight or this evening we're actually going to be doing my evening routine get unready with me. So um, I actually did an unready video last month and I like to switch it up so like every other month I do like AM routine then PM and kind of go back and forth or I try to at least make sure I'm alternating even if I do both AM and PM within one month. However, um, this month has just been such a blur um, between taking a little bit of a short road trip and doing some rock climbing in Moab a couple weeks ago to just work really picking back up and I'm having a lot of stuff that kind of hits my day right at the beginning of the morning. I'm even starting my work days a little bit earlier. Finding time to kind of set everything up and go through my AM routine just ha AM routine just really hasn't happened <laughs> um, this month. So I may still try to squeeze in a get ready with me video over the course of the next week before we do fully transition into November, but you might see this uh, routine in my last one or my PM routines um, back to back and then we'll talk AM routine at some point in the beginning of next month. So bear with me. Um, my products that I use in my routine are always changing pretty frequently and I didn't even really sit down and watch uh, my video from last month. So. I don't know what I have here that is going to be repeats, but we're just going to kind of go through it and maybe I'll bring up some new things I didn't mention in the last video if it has been longer than a month since I've been using them, but I think for the most part, the majority of what I have here is going to be new to you all as far as seeing it in my daily routine. Um, so there are a lot of products here. I um, pulled out a couple of masks that I wanted to incorporate into tonight because it started to cool down and um, get very snowy and cold here in Colorado. So I'm going to try to incorporate some more um, hydrating steps into my evening routine a little bit more frequently. So anytime it gets cold and we transition into like fall and winter, my routine tends to kind of bulk out because there's just more steps for more hydration as opposed to the summer where I can kind of keep it uh, pretty straightforward. But regardless, my routines are always a little extensive. Um, but before we begin, I just wanted to do a very quick review of a sunscreen. So this would be for my AM routine. This is the Misha um, All Around Safe Block Aqua Sun Gel SPF 50 plus PA 4 pluses. And so I've been using this sunscreen for um, just under a week, but previously I had used it for a, about a week and a half and then decided to set it aside because I wasn't seeing amazing results right out of the gate and I just wanted to take a break from it and come back to it and try it again because this is a product that comes highly recommended from one of my favorite um, skincare bloggers and uh, skincare kind of influencers, Jude or uh, Fitty Snails. So she features this a lot in her routine. Um, it's a very, very affordable you can uh, sunscreen, you can find it on Yes Style and Joel's usually for under 10 bucks. It offers some really nice protection. So the first time I used it and I was kind of like, eh, I decided to set it aside, give it another shot. I've been trying it for the past few days and some of the things that I do like about it are the fact that it's like a nice watery kind of li um, fluid sunscreen. So it's got this like slight wateriness to it, a little bit of, it might drip a little bit, not too much. But yeah, I just like the weight of it. It's nice and lightweight. Um, it absorbs nicely. It leaves zero white cast. And the finish of this isn't super dewy, but it isn't matte. It's kind of like this nice balance that leaves my skin feeling kind of soft while still hydrated. It doesn't feel drying. However, the scent of it is not my favorite. It's not bad, but it's just not great for me. It's got this kind of like powdery, fresh scent that I'm just not a huge fan of. It's, it's, it doesn't necessarily linger, but that first like 15, 20 minutes that it's on, it's just, I'm not the hugest fan of it. And especially as I'm massaging it in, I'm not a huge fan, but the main thing that keep, that kept me from continuing to use it last time and what's gonna make me stop using it completely now is that this does travel to my eye area pretty intensely. I even noticed in my last video where I was talking about good molecules and I did an unboxing, uh, my eyes looked a little red, they looked a little irritated. Today, now that I've applied this about three times, 
my eyes feel a little bit stingy and red and I can tell like they, they look a little red. And even when I was working today and I was like typing on the computer, it, it my eyes just felt strained or felt strained and a little irritated from this sunscreen. So by the end of the day for the past few days, I've just wanted to really get my oil cleanser around my eye area just to like get all of it off. So the stinging, you can combat that with applying a bit of a mineral sunscreen, so zinc or titanium dioxide right around the eye area. Those ingredients typically don't irritate the eyes as much or there's less of a potential. So when you do that, you're almost creating like a little wall around your eyes. So then when you bring in a chemical sunscreen like this one from Misha, it doesn't travel because it gets stopped by that mineral sunscreen that you've applied around the eye area. And so that does work. However, I've been finding some chemical sunscreens or um, organic sunscreens like the Keep Cool Bamboo Soothe Sun Essence, the Claire Soft Airy UV Essence, and the um, Bellflower uh, Watermelon Fresh Sunscreen. All three of those are all chemical-based sunscreens that do not burn my eyes even when I get apply it right up to my eye line and even when I'm out being active. So even if I get sweaty, I feel like those sunscreens don't irritate my eyes nearly as much as this one has been um, each time I use it. So I've only got a tiny little bit left because like I said, I've been using it on and off for, I think I started using this originally in June and then reintroduced it this past week um, or the past few days and it's a no-go. I really wanted to like it. It's so affordable. It feels really nice. But between the scent and the stinging, this one's going to be a pass for me. So that's just a, a review of that sunscreen um, because I doubt it'll ever make its way into my routine again, so I might as well mention it. So that's not part of my PM routine. That's just a bit of a rant. Um, but we'll move into my PM routine. And the first product that I have that I'm going to be using is the Pharmacy Green Clean Makeup um, Melt Away Cleansing Balm. I believe last month I was using the Beekman 1802. And so that'll pop up. I'm not sure which video will go up first, but I have an uh, October Empties video that I'll be posting around the same time as this one, so you'll hear about that some more, my final thoughts on it. Um, but the Pharmacy Green Clean, I've been using it for just about a month now, and I'm very, very happy with this product. It is a very lightweight, almost thin kind of feeling cleansing balm, if that makes sense. It has a super lightweight, um, not super waxy feel. It kind of has this buttery, creamy feel once you get it onto the spatula. And I love that rather than coming out in chunks, sometimes a cleansing balm can kind of be a little chunky when you um, get it out of the jar. This is just very smooth, very creamy, um, and it uses some more of those uh, PEGs, which are the emulsifying ingredients. So they haven't steered away from using those like some of the other cleansing balms I've used this year, like the um, like the Glow Recipe Papaya Sorbet Cleansing Balm. This is a really nicely emulsifying cleansing balm. It gets very, very milky and thin and just rinse, rinses very cleanly without a ton of effort. I've even used this with like lukewarm, even cool water, and it still rinses right off without leaving any residue behind, but it's not stripping. It's like this perfect balance between cleansing and, um, and non-stripping. It's very, very nice. And so um, my hesitation with this product is when I read the ingredients list, I'll be honest, I purchased this mainly because I was seeing a lot of hype around it and a lot of Korean YouTubers that I follow started mentioning the Pharmacy Green Clean. So I was like, if it's if it's a winner both on the, you know, in Korea and in the US, influencers that I follow or social media people that I follow are loving it. And if it's universally loved, then I gotta try it. And I didn't realize how many uh, citrus-based essential oils there were in this product. And I've kind of steered away from talking about that. Um, it, I've made a personal choice to try to remove as many of those as I could from my routine or as I can. But this was the one th last thing in my routine that even though I knew it had 
bergamot and lime and orange oil. I just didn't want to let it go because so many people rave about it, and I'm glad that I held on to it because my skin hasn't been reacting in a negative way to this formulation. So I don't know if it's because it's an oil cleanser, so it's not getting super deep and sinking in, and also it's a rinse-off product, so I don't know if that's why it hasn't been impacting me. Uh, like a lot of products have that contain, especially like grapefruit, bergamot, those types of oils. So I'm not sure what the case is. It, it puts a point towards maybe I don't need to be as incredibly picky as I have been recently and like literally taking stuff out of my stash and giving it away without even trying it because of the essential oils. So maybe I need to rethink that, but for now, I'm happy with omitting them because my skin has been happy since I've done that, um, but this one's kind of an anomaly. So let's go ahead and apply it. Um, so I've got just like a nice scoop of that. I put that right onto my fingers and then we're just going to work that into the skin. And like I said, it doesn't get chunky, it just kind of melts in like butter. And so I've just been so happy with this. It does a great job of eliminating um, my layers of sunscreen, excess oil, and sebum. It's been doing a good job of kind of getting rid of the sting around my eyes from the Misha sunscreen, which I really, really like. It is one of those cleansing balms that can cause some blurriness to the eyes if you get it right in your eye, but it's not super long lasting. I, it's And it's not intense. It's not like I can't see. You just want to be cautious of it. Um, so I usually just gently kind of massage um, cleansing oils that have a lot of slip. You don't need to apply pressure necessarily. You just kind of run your fingers across your um, the surface of your skin, which is kind of what I'm doing here. Like, not a lot of pressure in tugging, just kind of gliding my fingers across, which is nice. Um, so yeah, I'm very, very happy with this oil cleanser. It has a kind of lemon-lime, lemon-key lime pie kind of citrus scent, which makes sense with the, um, the fragrant oils that are in here. Um, and those of you that are, you know, those that might be particularly sensitive to citrus-based essential oils where you know for sure that you have an allergy to them or your skin immediately reacts poorly, then obviously this isn't one to risk it with. But I've just been kind of tracking which products tend to create some issues for me, whether that be the second I put it on or even a few weeks into use, I'll start to see some uh, poor reactions. And almost always the, the products that I worked into my routine around that time contain orange oil, grapefruit oil, bergamot oil, lemon oil, um, those types of things. So that's what kind of made, brought me to the conclusion of maybe I need to start skipping out on products that have a combination of those or one of them super high on the list. And I would say this Pharmacy Green Clean falls into that category. It has several of those oils right smack dab in the middle of the ingredients list. So together, they're probably pretty concentrated and the smell would suggest that. But like I said, this this one's an anomaly. I'm not really seeing those bright red bumps. My pores don't look super inflamed. My face doesn't feel puffy after using this product. And like I said, I've been using it daily, sometimes even twice daily um, for just about a month now. And I'm very, very happy. So. That's that, I give it about a minute to um, to massage in and do its thing, and then we're just gonna go ahead and rinse. Be right back. Okay, so we've got that all rinsed off, and I'm just gonna pat dry just so I can talk to you without the water dripping everywhere. One time use towel goes right into the laundry um, hamper so it can be washed so I can use it again. So um, I'm, I'm not big on just grabbing a towel that's used over and over just because I want to keep things as clean and sanitary as possible and reduce the spread of bacteria potentially. So that's that for that cleansing balm. It leaves my skin, like I said, it feels soft, it feels cleansed, but it doesn't feel stripped. If anything, it feels kind of like a little bit dewy, I guess. It's just this very nicely cleansed, refreshed feeling without being too overly cleansed, which is nice. So um, that is that for the cleansing balm. The next step 
in my routine is my water-based cleanser, but I'm going to be popping into the shower. So I'll talk about the product. I'll talk about how I use it, but I'm actually going to use it in the shower. And right now I have been enjoying the Herbivore Pink Cloud. This is their cream jelly cleanser. And so this was another product that it has been super hyped, especially over the summer. Everyone had pink themed flat lays on Instagram and everything was pink with this this cleanser kind of being one of the star products of that dreamy kind of pink theme. And so this is um, a jelly cleanser and you can kind of see it has this like uh, cloudy kind of swirly texture or swirly look to it. Um, I actually saw this for the first time or as far as someone kind of talking about the product is on the Beauty Within YouTube channel. So they were using a bunch of brand new cleansers, um, Roe and um, Fell were using uh, this cleanser, I think the Tatcha Rice Wash was also in that video, which I've got in my stash. So I was a little bit reluctant to buy it, but then um, I had a discount at Sephora and I figured I'd go ahead and give it a shot. So this is a very straightforward cleanser. It uses coconut-based surfactants. There's a rose hydrosol or kind of like a form of rose water in here. And I believe a couple other soothing ingredients as well. I'm not sure if Centella's in here or if it's chamomile, but something in regards to anti-inflammation, redness. And so this is supposed to be a very gentle, calming, soothing uh, cleanser as well. And so it's got this jelly, but it also has this creaminess. So it is true to its name. And when, when you apply it with your hands, it starts off feeling kind of like a jelly, but the lather that you get with this uh, particular cleanser is pretty rich. And then it starts to feel kind of foamy and creamy. So it's not one of those gel cleansers that kind of doesn't have too much lather and just kind of slips around and feels watery. This does kind of foam up and feel a little bit more creamy, a little bit more luxurious, which is kind of a cool combo. Um, I use mine in the AM on my face, just one pump on my face with my hands. And then at night, I usually go for one and a half to two pumps and I pop it on the Ferreo Luna 3 just to add a little bit of a deeper cleanse, a little bit of kind of that buffing effect that you get from the Ferreo, which I'll do a full review on eventually. I've already had it for two months and I have yet to formally talk about it, but I'm happy. Um, so I use a little bit more product with the Ferreo because it does tend to catch that thicker jelly deeper down and so I feel like I need a little bit more to get a nice lather, a nice coat on my face without this feeling like it's pulling. So um, usually when I use, because I used to use a Clairsonic back in the day too, anytime I use a cleansing tool I actually go a little bit heavier with my use of my cleansers. I'll use a little bit more than if I was just to put it in my hands. So I do burn through product faster that way but I do enjoy the exfoliation, the mild exfoliation, exfoliation, the buffing, the extra results you get from using something like a Ferreo. So it's kind of an even trade-off. There's like a hair flying around, <laughs> several hairs. Um, so that's what I'm going to be using in the shower. I'm bringing this with me. The other products that I'm using in the shower that I just posted reviews on, <clears throat> other products that I'm going to be using the, in the shower that I just posted a review on, on the blog, I will leave links for everything down below are the Drunk Elephant hair care products. So this one I'm not using tonight, but I do wanna talk about them. I'm gonna be doing a Drunk Elephant hair and body care review at some point once I uh, finish up all the reviews. Uh, it'll probably be at some point early next month, so be on the lookout. But I do wanna mention, um, I'm not using this tonight, but the TLC ha Happy Scalp Scrub has been in my routine for just over a month now. This is a scalp scrub that utilizes AHA and BHA. I have pretty short hair but in the especially in the fall and winter time my scalp becomes an issue it can get dry flaky it starts to itch just from the dryness of the weather plus wearing hats a lot my scalp just gets funky during you know from pretty much from October September October all the way through like March my scalp is just doing weird things so this has been really really nice to eliminate any itchiness any of that flakiness and it just leaves my scalp thoroughly 
uh, cleansed feeling and just soft while still feeling a bit hydrated. So I'll talk more about it in the formal review, but I'm very happy with this. And then I've also got the um, shampoo and conditioner from Drunk Elephant. This is the Coco Mino Glossing Shampoo, and this is the Coco Mino Marula Cream Conditioner. And I picked all of the all of three of these up after um, Dr. Dre on her YouTube channel mentioned that she actually kind of likes these products and would recommend them, especially the Happy Scalp Scrub. And she's pretty critical of Drunk Elephant, so when she said that she would repurchase them, I was like, all right, we're on board. Um, but the, the Cocomino shampoo and conditioner both feature marula oil, obviously. Um, you've got tamanu oil and sweet almond oil in this one. In the conditioner, you also have sweet almond oil in this one as well. Um, and then it also has, I believe it's got a couple other oils. Um, obviously, marula oil is in this. Um, sunflower seed oil. So I liked both of these. This is a pH of 5.5 and then the conditioner is 3.6 and I even with my short hair it tends to be very coarse and stick-like so it's hard to tame down. It just doesn't like to do anything and it doesn't always feel the best just running your hand on it. It can feel kind of rough and coarse but the shampoo, conditioner, and the scrub have really helped to soften everything. Just make my, my scalp feel soft, make my my hair feel kind of soft and smooth and manageable even when I'm just putting a little bit of styling balm just to lay it flat it just seems to be responding better to all of that so I don't know if it's because the pH formulation is more attuned to what makes my type of hair my you know slightly curly uh, coarse um, thicker hair once it does grow out. It just responds really well and my scalp responds really well to all of these products and it just feels like I'm finally taking care of my hair in the way that I've been taking care of the skin on my face for the past few years. I feel like I'm finally kind of bringing that up. Whereas before I was using um, the, the Sunbums hair care products were nice. Um, and before that, I was just using pretty much whatever I would find at Target. So tea tree oil, oil whatever, that comes in a gallon size. I think I might still have it. Um, yeah, this, this, here we are. So this is what I had been using. Oh my gosh. For the longest time, it's from Ren Pure Advanced, and it's their Extra Strength Tea Tree and Lemon Sage Moisture Shampoo and Conditioner. So I had been using these which is 946 milliliters. These are enormous for the longest time. I've moved with these because they're just so big. And this one has a little less than half. This one has a bit more than half. And so this is what I've been using forever. And I just always thought my hair is, my hair is thick, my hair is coarse because of my ethnicity. It's always going to be unruly. Um, the flakiness, I really didn't know how to deal with that. It was just seasonal, so I just kind of lived with it. Um, but the Drunk Elephant products have finally kind of churned the corner, or helped me churn the corner, and really start being mindful of my scalp health and my hair health. And so I'm in love. I really, really love uh, the Drunk Elephant products for the hair. I wasn't a fan of the deodorant. We'll talk about that in the brand review. And I still have yet to put together final thoughts for the body wash, the body lotion, and their Tangle Spray. Those are three products from this body and hair care line that I still need to kind of put my final thoughts down on paper. But so far, so good for the most part. So anyway, be on the lookout for that review in the coming weeks. Um, and I'll also, like I said, put the links for the reviews that I have done thus far in the description box below. So let me pop into the shower, let me get my second step cleanse on, and when we come back, we will continue moving through the rest of this evening routine. Bye. All right, um, so just popped out of the shower, um, cleansed, and now we're ready to move on to the next steps in the routine. The cleanse after using the herbivore, the pink cloud, cream jelly cleanser, I have to grab pink cloud creamy jelly cleanser, my apologies, is nice. It's, it's a nice cleanser. Um, I've only been using it for about a week and a half now, maybe even a little bit less than that. Um, the feeling of it, that jelly kind of smooth, silky combination of like jelly and that foamy cream is very, very nice, very luxurious. The sensorial experience of using this texture is pretty awesome. Um, however, outside of that, um, 
even the the scent of it, you can kind of smell a little bit of the rose, but mostly it's just those surfactants that come through. It kind of just has like that basic cleanser kind of scent, but just a touch of maybe rose, a little bit of floral. And even though I'm not the hugest fan of rose scents, coming from this brand and the fact that it, they focused on the rose hydrosol, I was hoping that there would be more to kind of round out that experience. But aside from the scent and the feel of it, the actual result, it does thoroughly cleanse my skin. I do find it to be a tad too drying for me, and that might be the fault of the Ferreo. Maybe I just need to use this with my hands, so I'll, I'll have to play with that. But even in the AM when I do use my hands, it feels a little drying and it doesn't leave that like kind of hydrated bounce feeling behind my skin's just kind of like like it just is very ba <laughs> basic is hard is a it's a tough word to to use because that can mean so many things it just feels it doesn't feel like what i would anticipate an a 20 something dollar herbivore cleanser would feel like even though this is the first product i've used from them just looking at the bottle and the packaging and the claims and the marketing and then seeing my face afterwards, I'm like, oh, 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 oh. Like that's kind of my reaction to it. So I just need to give it some more time. It does cleanse well. It doesn't feel necessarily stripping. It's just a little bit drier than some of the other coconut based cleansers that I've been using recently. Okay, so moving on to the next step in my routine, I'm actually going to be um, using the Cora's, I think that's how you pronounce it, Cora's <laughs> Hydrobiome Probiotic Super Dose Face Mask with Real Greek Yogurt. So um, this has been in my routine for a couple of weeks now. Once the weather starts getting cooler or colder or we start getting the snow, um, that usually goes hand in hand with my skin starting to become more dry. So over the like fall into winter months, my skin does start to get kind of dry, more parched. It can even start feeling tight throughout the day. And so I try to incorporate some more hydrating products into my routine. And previously, or I guess 2018 and 2019, I focused mostly on watery hydration, layering a lot of lightweight toners, incorporating more sheet masks into my routine, just spending more time keeping my skin kind of damp and hydrated, whatever hydrated wherever I can, and also that also includes facial mist, those types of things. So this year I'm going to be doing all of that, but I wanted to kind of see if I can take it to the next level with maybe some richer, more emollient wash-off style masks. So this is the first one that I picked from Cora's. I also have one from uh, pharmacy in my stash as well as another one from I'm From. So this one from Cora's, it's a probiotic focused wash off mask that features Greek yogurt um, as the second ingredient. It also has apricot kernel oil, squalane in it. Um, you have sweet almond oil in here, shea butter, sunflower seed oil. So it's got a lot of these kind of more heavier emollient ingredients that will kind of help to hold hydration to the skin, um, give the skin a more nourished and kind of um, softer feel, but then it also has rice extract in it as well, which should help with brightening and evening skin tone. So it's kind of a nice balance between something like thick and heavy, but also something that's focused on brightening. So um, this is the mask here, and let's go ahead and pop this on. It's got this kind of creamy, thick texture, kind of like yogurt. Um, and it's got a little bit of a bounce to it as well. It's almost kind of like a pudding slash yogurt kind of consistency. So I'm just gonna look over off to the side here so I can see what I'm doing. And so I use this, this will be I believe the fifth use I've gotten out of this. And I just go in with a fairly heavy layer. It has like an, a, a fairly immediate cooling effect just from having that liquid or that um, cream on the skin, the mask on the skin, which is nice. Um, and the scent is kind of like a, um, a bit milky, a bit floral, a bit sweet. It's not my favorite, um, but it's not bad. It's just, it almost smells like, um, the, the baby wash that we used to buy when my little brothers were like little babies. It smells like Johnson and Johnson kind of baby wash, I guess. So it's not, um... It's not off-putting, it's just maybe a little bit different, I guess. 
So like I said, I go pretty heavy with this um, just because I do leave, I think it says to leave it on for 10 to 15 minutes. I usually go for the max of that. And your skin, I found, does start to absorb some of this, um, which I guess was what imparts that hydration. Um, so I go heavy, that way my skin has a chance to absorb as much as possible. All right, so that's that nice thick layer applied. So let's go ahead and give this about 15 minutes to do its thing, and then I will come back to you, show you what it looks like after it's had that time, and then we'll rinse. Okay, so we just hit right about 15 minutes with this mask on, and as you can see, a lot of that um, kind of creaminess from the mask actually does kind of settle and absorb into the skin, which is nice to see. You can also almost see where I went maybe even a little bit too heavy, where my skin just wasn't taking in anymore. Uh, so let's go ahead and rinse this. It still is, it's not like dry or anything like that. It still has kind of a nice lotion-y type consistency to it that you can absolutely just massage around. So I could, I'm sure I could go longer with this mask, um, but we're gonna stick to the rules this time around, and I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this. So let me do that. One moment. Okay, so let me just pat this, try. Just very, very lightly patting it. Um, I noticed that as this rinses, it kind of mixes with the water to kind of create this nice kind of like soft creamy feeling and it almost makes you want to stop rinsing it and just leave it as like a moisturizer to pat in. Um, it just it just feels very soft. My skin feels very hydrated, dewy, kind of bouncy and soft. It's kind of what I would want from an extra hydrating wash off mask. It's very nice. Um, as far as the benefits of the brightening from the rice or the probiotics from the yogurt and kind of milk proteins in this product, I can't really speak to that just yet. And probiotics is not necessarily something you're gonna see visible difference with. Um, just like antioxidants, it's not gonna be this immediate like, oh, look at the probiotics doing this or that. They just kind of work behind the scenes to help support skin health. So, you know, I guess you could attribute it to if you're um, seeing a, a healthier skin barrier, you're not sensitized by products as easily as you used to be. Um, if you're not, um, feeling any sort of like intense redness or irritation. If your skin feels more resilient, then that could speak to how probiotics are working to help support the like microbiome of your skin. So um, that's that. It just feels very soft, very, very hydrated, a little bit bouncy. Like it's definitely imparted quite a bit of hydration, which is a good result. So I'm happy with it so far. I'm, I'm excited to continue to use it and you'll see a full review of that on the blog um, as we get closer to the one month mark. So moving right along, we're gonna go into kind of my first essence or my first serum. This is kind of an interesting product. And once again, I don't remember if it's something that I covered in my last PM routine video, but it's the Sulwasu First Care Activating Serum. And so this is a product that I have been using for, I wanna say it's been about three weeks, so it might not have popped up last month, um, but it is a first serum. So rather than using it in your normal serum steps, so like cleanse, tone, essence serum, or cleanse, tone serum, this goes right after cleansing, exfoliating or any wash off products. So on days that I use acid, so AHA or BHA, I use this right after, or days that I have a wash off product like the Corez mask, then I'm gonna use that right after that. So it's kind of an interesting concept because you're, it has a, the, the look and the feel of a serum, but you're using it at the very beginning of your kind of leave on routine or leave on steps. So the um, intention of this product is to help to impart some brightness, extra hydration, plump and firm the skin. It's also used to help increase the absorption of everything else that you use after it. So just like a first treatment essence, it's just kind of, wetting the sponge of the skin so that way other watery products can soak right in without just kind of sitting on the surface. So it uses a complex of five traditional Korean ingredients. So it's kind of in that hanbang, kind of traditional medicinal skincare realm. Um, but it also has um, a fairly high amount of fragrance, um, something just to keep in mind, it's not a deal breaker for me. And it also has alcohol fairly high on the list. Once again, not necessarily a deal breaker, 
trigger for me. And it actually kind of makes sense because alcohol does usually help to um, allow products and certain skincare ingredients and formulations to penetrate into the skin a little bit more deeply than they would otherwise. So it makes sense that this is used to facilitate the absorption of other ingredients. So they say to use two to three pumps of product. And so I do three because I've got a big head. One, two, three. And it's just this kind of lightweight, watery product. I think we mentioned this last month. I'm not quite sure. Um, but so I'll just breeze through the explanation. So just go ahead and pat that in. But yeah, it has like a slight herbal, earthy scent, uh, slightly sweet, but the alcohol um, does kind of come through in a way that I wasn't necessarily expecting because when I think of Sulwasu and what that means to me, even though I'm only familiar with this and one other product, it's that sensorial experience where that ginseng or the pine or the earthy scents really come through in a pronounced way, whether that be from the extracts or from synthetic or um, fragrance or other fragrant oils, what have you. They, it seemed like they really did a good job in the last product they used. Scent is a really big part of it and this because that alcohol kind of pierces through everything else, it just doesn't doesn't put you in that mood that the um, Snow Wise EX cleanser that I used a couple years ago did. So a little bit interesting. There's a there. I got it. I think I got it. Um, so yeah, it, it dries down nicely. It makes my skin feel soft. It doesn't feel drying like a potentially an a highly alcohol-based product would, but there isn't really anything special. I don't feel like particularly hydrated. I, I don't feel like it instantly brightened my skin or anything like that. So the more I use it, the more I'm kind of like, is this worth the $90 for 60 milliliters? Or this, this larger size was 90 milliliters for, I believe, like $102. Like, is adding that, you know, 90, 80 to $100 step in the beginning of my routine that's an extra step that takes more time. Is it really proving itself in the long run? And I'm still a little on the fence about that. I need just a bit more time to kind of finalize my thoughts. So uh, we'll move into the toner and you won't be able to tell because this is a little bubble pump toner that I'm using. I definitely talked about this in a previous video, I believe. Oh my gosh, I should have watched it. Um, uh, but this is actually the Claire's uh, Daily Skin uh, Softening Water, I believe it's what it's called. And I just decant it into this little bubble maker because I like the, the mild amount of quick bubbles it provides each time I pump it. So this features um, cucumber water, it's also got sugar cane water in it and apple fruit water. So it's meant to hydrate, soothe, but the sugar cane and the apple fruit can also be considered a mild form of softening or smoothing of the skin because they can have those very, very mild exfoliating properties. This is nowhere near as intense as like a glycolic acid or a, uh, or a lactic acid or those types of AHAs. This would be the most base level, gentle, probably not even going to be noticeable exfoliation. But if you do layer this quite frequently and use it every day, you could see those results. But I wouldn't consider this my exfoliating toner like the um, Crave Beauty Kayla Luya or something along those lines. This is not even in the same realm. So um, once again, it's the Claire's Daily Skin Softening Water, I believe is what it's called. And I just have it in this because I like when it goes bloop and does that kind of like foamy thing. That's That was hard to see, we'll do it again. But I just do one pump and pat that in. And then we'll go again. Let's see if I can really get it this time. Let me get out of the way. Bloop. I just like that fizzing effect. I don't know, I'm such a skincare weirdo. I probably said that on the last video if we did talk about it, but I just love those little moments where you just get to have a bit of fun with your skincare and that little kind of like fizzy, foamy type thing is just fun for me, I enjoy it. So I just kind of massage it around, pat it in. Um, I try not to pat super aggressively, but I always end up doing it. Um, I always think back, I forget who, did a video of their skincare routine. It was like a Korean YouTuber or um, skincare kind of person, personality. And they were talking about how anytime they go to the spa or if they saw their mom or anything like that, they were always like very intensely patting. And so they've just gotten into the habit of when they pat their skincare in, it's kind of like a, 
like it's a little bit more intense than a soft pad. It's like like that, and I kind of like it. I, I it wakes me up in the morning for sure. I feel like it kind of gets me refreshed. I don't think it's damaging my skin. It. it it might be, I don't wanna say that for sure, but I try not to do it on my eyes, but like, especially right here, it's just like, wake up, come on, it's time to get up. Um, so I kinda like that. Uh, but yeah, I'll usually do two to four pumps of this product and then, whoops, and then pat that in. So like two to four layers. I feel like each pump is probably about 10, 12 drops-ish from the actual bottle, so it almost equates to two. So like a few drops pat, a few drops pat is equated to like one pump. So my two to four pumps is almost like four to eight skins of like the seven skin method. That's kind of how I have it in my head. And really anything more than four pumps, my skin usually can't absorb really well. It, it takes forever to pat in and it just stays on the surface. So um, that's that for the toner. And then I do use an essence right now and I'm using the Make Prem. This is their intensive essence water for skin conditioning and this is their Chaga Concentrate Essence. So the only ingredient in here is um, Chaga Extract in here. So it's got that deep brown color and chaga mushroom is an adaptogen which when taken and you know ingested people say that it can help to balance mood kind of um, it take care of internal inflammation so um, it helps to just kind of provide a, a healthier like internal system but as far as the adaptogens basically what that means to some people is when you're stressed and when you know you're really elevated maybe overly high energy an adaptogen such as chaga mushroom can kind of help balance that but on the flip side when you're feeling sluggish and low energy and just kind of even emotionally down um, adaptogens can help to kind of bring you up so it's this kind of balancing ingredient that kind of brings you to a nice baseline. At least that's how I've understood incorporating adaptogens into your uh, meal routine or into shakes or coffees. They come in all sorts of forms. And the same is supposed to be true topically. So if your skin is very, very red, inflamed, irritated, it's supposed to help calm that down and balance it. However, if your skin's feeling a little bit saggy or dull or it's just not, it doesn't have that vitality, it's supposed to help to kind of awaken in that. So once again, bringing a nice balance to the skin. They, they do have, a chaga mushroom does have anti-inflammatory properties, and if nothing else, it's a very powerful antioxidant. So utilizing it in the morning or throughout your skincare routine can be really beneficial. So Make Prem has just put it all in this bottle, um, all, just one ingredient similar to like a mugwort essence, like the one from I, I'm From. And so I've been really happy with this so far. I've been using it for, I think, just about two weeks. And I just do one splash of the, the essence. You probably can't see that. But I don't need very much. It's very lightweight and watery. But I'm not necessarily using this for the hydration like I did the toner. I'm mainly using this to help boost antioxidant power, maybe help to reduce some inflammation that I might have. Um, and, but I just like adaptogens and I like the idea of having a balancing ingredient in my routine. And so having just this single extract, I think will help me kind of identify if chaga is the right way to go. Maybe I need to find the tremella or I need to use a different mushroom um, in my routine that might work for me. I have a product from Moon Juice. I love this toner for its exfoliating power. Um, it uses AHA and BHA. It's from the brand Moon Juice, but you also have, um, where are you? They have Reishi Mushroom in here, which is another adaptogen. And Moon Juice has a whole skincare line that's kind of focused around mushroom ingredients, which is kind of cool. So um, the Make Prem Chaga Mushroom Essence has this very woodsy, very earthy kind of scent. So it's more in line with what I would imagine the Sulawasu serum would have smelled like. It's just this kind of like dirt kind of scent. And I love, love, love those very woodsy, earthy scents. And there's no added fragrance, no synthetic fragrance, no essential oils. That's just the smell of that mushroom extract. And I, I can't get enough. It's the best. It's very, very mild. It dissipates almost instantly, but you get that little hit of it that's great. Very, very happy. So I still need time to figure out how this is going to impact my skin over the long run, but so far, so good. It doesn't have 
that immediate hit of brightening like a normal first treatment essence would or um, some other brightening essences because you don't have galactomyces ferment filtrate in here, you don't have niacinamide in here, so it's not the secret key Misha Iope uh, essences that I love. It's on a different plane than that, and, and it's meant to address some different things, so something to keep in mind. Um, but next up, we're going to go right into our serum step, and right now I am using the Even Prime barrier serum. There we go. This one's hard for the camera to focus on, I think, because of the holograph. But yeah, it's wonderful holographic packaging. It's from the same line that makes the um, Even Prime cleanser, the cleansing gel, and the soothing mist that I've reviewed, I believe, on the previous video. And I'll be doing a brand review once I hit the one month mark with this serum. This is, come on, buddy. This is their latest release. This serum has a whole laundry list of antioxidants, peptides, madocasticides, soothing ingredients, everything you could think of that you would want in a barrier supporting serum is kind of packed all inside this. It reminds me a lot of like if you were to take the peptides and stuff from the Ordinary Buffet and mix that with all of the um, supporting ingredients and like nice hydrating ingredients that you find in the Great Barrier Relief, and it just has a lot of those key highlighted ingredients from all of these wonderful um, barrier supporting anti-aging serums kind of all in one. But what's shocking about that is this has the most wonderful, come on focus, lightweight, watery, like nothing texture. It's just like super watery and it almost has a light kind of lavender color and I, I'll have to look into what causes that. But um, no fragrance here, doesn't smell like anything. It absorbs like a dream. I just, everything from Even Prime has worked really, really well for my skin type. Um, there's the next product we'll talk about it works a little too well for my skin type in colder weather, we'll get to it, but this serum, it just melts right in. It kind of provides an instant hit of hydration, a little bit of brightening, but I have to say if I, if I pick one, if I had to pick one thing in the past couple of weeks that I've worked into my routine where I'm like, wow, I think this is really helping to keep a lot of excess sebum, maybe keeping some acne and breakouts at bay, keeping some redness at bay. I really think the barrier serum is doing it for me. I need some more time to have my official opinion on it, but it's just, it's an early win and something that's really been impressing me early on. So super happy and it's so lightweight that I think that's gonna be great for, or potentially great for those with really oily combination skin or those with drier skin that want to layer this with a thicker serum but still get all those benefits, I think this is a good choice. So, all right, last couple of products and we'll actually talk about them uh, together quickly because I use them together. So this is also from Even Prime, it's their daily moisturizer. Dun, 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 dun. And then this is from Solve Skincare. This is their 100% organic golden jojoba oil. So this is just jojoba oil in a serum. And then this moisturizer is a lightweight serum that once again has madocasticide, has some hydrators and emollient ingredients to lock in moisture, but it's a super duper lightweight consistency. And in the summertime and in the AM for me, this lightweight water up uh, kind of watery gel product would be great. I, I absolutely have loved it on days where it's a bit hotter because it just kind of melts down into a watery consistency and absorbs nicely. But now that it's getting pretty cold and especially in my PM routine where I want something a little bit heavier, at least in the PM, it's not quite enough for me, and I could see it probably most certainly not being enough for those with normal and dry skin. It's just a little too lightweight. It has all the things you need. It's got the Sika, and it's got, I forget if it has shea butter or squalane, but it's got some kind of emollient in it. So it has the things, it's just that it doesn't feel like it's quite locking in enough hydration, at least for the PM for me moving into winter. So that's why I incorporate a few drops of the 100% organic golden jojoba oil from Solve Skincare. This has been amazing. I cannot tell you the last time that I used a facial oil that I went through it so quickly because I just want to use it 
in every routine, a.m., p.m., come grab a couple drops and pat that in before I do an extra layer of sunscreen. Like, I just love this stuff because it's been keeping my skin so nourished and hydrated without ever feeling greasy or like it's not sinking in or it's overwhelming to my skin. It just like soaks right in. And I know jojoba oil is supposed to be very skin similar or sebum similar. And so I'm just loving, loving, loving this stuff. It's great. So I, at night I do six drops. I'm going a little overboard with it because things have been cooling down so much. And I just work that between my palms and press it in. It has like a nice nutty kind of scent to it that dissipates really quickly, but and it gives you that nice glow. I could see those with um, dry skin that want that kind of sheen or glow, um, incorporating this in their AM routine or adding it to a bit of foundation maybe if they're makeup wearers. It just feels so versatile and it leaves my skin feeling so smooth without, once again, without being greasy. I could go on, it's great. It's probably one of my most favorite, if not my most favorite facial oil thus far. And um, most facial oils, I could probably have one bottle and use it the entire year. And I've been using this for less than a month and I'm already pretty much a third of the way through because I just keep like, I just come into my bathroom and I'm like, oh, I just get a couple drops of that. <laughs> so it's just, it's great. I'm really, really a fan of it. So I um, can't wait to share my final thoughts on it. I'll probably be doing, um, well, I will be doing, let's go ahead and just spoil it. I'm going to be doing a um, Anthony's Dream Routine or a Favorite Skincare Products of 2020 video. Um, that'll be coming up probably the second week of November. And so I'll be picking the top three of each category that I use. So think oil cleansers, water-based cleansers, toners, the top three, and then I'll be naming the number one, obviously. So, and then at the end, I'll also be picking the number one product overall that wowed me the most for the entire year. And then I'll also be selecting a brand that's really impressed me with each product that they have um, that I've tried from the brand or that they currently have available. So um, if that gives you any hint as to what that brand might be, I've just really fallen in love with this oil from Solve Skincare. So that's that. That is going to be a very long video once it's even after editing. But let me know if you have any questions about this PM routine. Um, if you have any suggestions for something um, for me to incorporate or if you think that I should be changing something up, just let me know. Otherwise, all the links and price for all the products we discussed will be below. Um, you can find full reviews of the majority of the products that I try on my Instagram page. So head on over there. There should be a link on my YouTube homepage. I'll put a link in the description box. If you want to see what products I'm working in, I always do product welcomes. So like today's day one with this product. So you can see and track the history of like, oh, I started a product this day, finished it this day. Um, you can also take a look at some of my hauls and maybe smaller purchases um, and just more things that you, I don't really talk about too much on YouTube. So that's that. Thank you again for watching. Leave any comments and questions below. Otherwise, as always, stay glowing. Bye.